I know this is going to sound kind of weird, but sometimes I'm looking at a photograph of a person and it's very difficult for me to look at it because the person in the photograph is looking directly at the camera and to look at the photograph means I have to look at the person in the eye. It's a picture. It's a photograph. It's not even a real person. It's inanimate. But still, there's something inside my brain neurologically that tells me this is really uncomfortable. Well, the question is this. Why is it that people with Asperger's syndrome have such a difficult time looking other people in the eye? Well, there's a short answer. The short answer is it's just uncomfortable. But there's a lot more to it than just that short answer, and we're going to dig deep into this. So uh, hang in there. But before we get to the uh, five reasons why Aspies don't like to look other people in the eye, and by the way, some of these are very practical reasons. I think they're good reasons. But before we dig into that, let's do a little setup so we'll have a foundation to build on. First of all, my name is Ken. Uh, I'm almost 70 years old, hard to believe, and during those 70 years, you know, I've learned a thing or two. Life is my laboratory, and uh, I take those things that I've learned, and I share them with people. I've, I've spent my entire life living with Asperger's Syndrome, and so I want to share some of those experiences with you, and hopefully I can help some people along the way. And by the way, you can help me too. Just go to the comment section below the video and tell me what's on your mind. When I was a kid, one thing I remember that uh, my dad would work part-time as a paper hanger to supplement his income. He had a full-time job in the day, but sometimes on weekends or evenings, he would do uh, small jobs like wallpapering and painting. I know people don't wallpaper um, like they used to back in the 50s and 60s, but... Uh, I would go with him. I'd tag along, and sometimes I would even help. Most of the time I got in the way, but sometimes I would even help. And I recall one time I was with my dad as he was uh, doing some wallpapering. And uh, I recall very distinctly because this woman happened to be German, and I have an affinity for German people. I even took German class later when I was in high school. But I remember this German woman, middle-aged, and uh, she noticed that I was not making eye contact. And she said something about it that uh, I thought was kind of rude in hindsight. But little kid, I don't know, what was I, 9, 10 years old? And she said something to the effect that if you don't make eye contact, it means that you are, uh, I don't know what she said, maybe mean or aloof or something like that. And... Um, I think what she was doing was trying to bully me into making eye contact because she did not understand why I didn't. Did not help. All right, so we're going to get to uh, the five questions right now. But when we're done, we're also going to address this all-important question. Should people try to force those of us with Asperger's syndrome to make eye contact so that they can have our undivided attention. This crops up in school a lot, where teachers say, look me in the eye, because I want to have your undivided attention. Is that a good idea or not? Okay, hang in there. We're going to answer it in a few minutes, and also we'd like to hear your answer in the comments section. So what are the five reasons? Uh, reason number one is this. We are not proficient in body language. Eye contact is a form of body language. Okay, everybody speaks body language. We show expressions in our face. We show expressions with our body, the way that we stand, the way that we posture ourselves, all kinds of different forms of um, communication, particularly with our hands. Uh, Italians are good at that. They communicate very well with their hands, at least to each other. I don't always know what they're saying. But that's eye contact. It's a way of communicating with other people. You can tell by looking in their eye what they are thinking. It's kind of like a mind-reading technique, unless you're not very good at it. It's just kind of pointless. Well, the way that I like to say that is... It's like having a conversation with somebody who speaks a foreign language, talking about, I, uh, talking about body language. They do not understand or speak your language, and you do not understand or speak their language. Okay, how's that conversation going to go? 
probably not very good. So when we try to communicate with body language, conversation doesn't last very long. Reason number two is this. We're not neurologically wired for social interactions. That is not quite the same as body language, but it, enco it encompasses body language. So you put a person with Asperger's syndrome in with a group of people, or even one-on-one, -on -one, a small group of just two. And, uh, you know, that's social interaction that is mandated. Otherwise, you wind up standing in a corner or the uh, proverbial flower wall, which, um, you know, I do kind of frequently if you put me in with a group of people. So eye contact, it's kind of hard to make eye contact with people when you are that proverbial flower wall. Uh, wallflower, sorry, get it backwards. Reason number three is this. Um, it's really not very practical to look people in the eye. Okay, I know if you are neurotypical, as we said before, that's a part of communication. And to them, it is very practical. To people who are neurotypical, it makes perfect sense for them to make eye contact because that's part of their, as we said earlier, part of their communication. But to people with Asperger's syndrome who don't communicate with that language, we don't speak the body language, it's a foreign language to us, it's really not very useful. I mean, why would you look somebody in the eye? We want to do things that are more practical, things that are more useful. And for that reason, what you will do is you will discover that people with Asperger's syndrome have other ways of paying attention, undivided attention, besides looking you in the eye or looking others in the eye. What I do a lot of times is I will just turn my head and... Um, turn my ear to the person who is speaking. That way, I sometimes I'll put my head down, close my eyes so I can listen. That helps me focus. Other times, what a lot of people with Asperger's syndrome do is they will actually look at the person's mouth. That makes perfect sense to me. After all, it's not your eye that is speaking. It's a person's mouth that speaks. Oh, even the Bible says that. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, not the eyes. So where do we get this idea that the eyes are the windows of the soul? How many beautiful young ladies have been led astray because they were looking for their knight in shining armor, and along came this guy with what they think are beautiful brown eyes, or they would say cute brown eyes. And they were deceived. It turns out the guy was not what they thought he was. In extreme cases, the guy could have turned out to be a narcissist or a psychopath. He just knew how to play them. So, uh, it's just not real practical, in my opinion, for a person with Asperger's syndrome to look people in the eye. There's better ways to pay close attention. So, that is reason number three, by the way. Reason number four is this, because we are normal. Yes, even neurotypical people will avoid making eye contact when it's unintentional. I don't know if you have been uh, looking at somebody and then suddenly they look at you unexpectedly and our natural response reaction is to look away. Everybody does it, including people with Asperger's syndrome. So that's reason number four. We just do what everybody else does, at least, um, at least in those circumstances. All right, that takes us to reason number five, and that is we like to focus. This kind of is clinical to what, or um, similar to what we said earlier, but we like to focus, so it's very difficult to us to focus on what you're saying, what someone else is saying when we are being distracted by the fact that we have to look you in the eye, which is very uncomfortable. That is distracting. So that is something that sets apart people with Asperger's syndrome from neurotypical people. They are very comfortable looking others in the eye. It helps them to focus. With us, just the opposite is true. It is very, very, very disturbing. It is very distracting. All right, let's uh, put this in context. Maybe it's easier to understand. Have you ever been listening to a song that you like and uh, you just kind of close your eyes and listen to it. Why do you do that? Well, there's something about isolating 
the sense of hearing that makes it more tenable. And the same thing is true when you're having a conversation. You may not close your eyes like this to listen to what the person is saying. Sometimes you do, but oftentimes you look away for the same reason that you would close your eyes. And a lot of people, well, it's not just listening to music. Some people, it's when they're singing. You ever watch singers on television or on YouTube? Uh, they really get into their song. It's kind of a soulful song. What do they do? They close their eyes. Why? Because they're focused on the message. And sometimes if you're eating one of those tasty morsels, I've seen people close their eyes and they just savor the taste of whatever it is they're eating. So what we do is we take that particular sense of hearing, or in those cases it's um, tasting, but we isolate that particular sensory perception so it becomes more acute, so we can focus. So that brings us to that all encompassing question that we ask at the very onset. And that question is this, should we or should anybody insist that people with Asperger's syndrome look them in the eye because, well, because they think it's polite, but more frequently because they want our undivided attention. And the answer, I think you probably already know my opinion, the answer is no, because it has the opposite, opposite, opposite effect. What I say is this, typical people, neurotypical people, errantly believe that eye contact is necessary to command attention. What's more, they believe the absence of eye contact indicates we are not paying attention. That is the opposite, the exact opposite of what is often true. The problem arises when neurotypical people expect Aspergians to respond like neurotypical people, and that's perfectly understandable. It's the thing called theory of mind. Theory of mind, as I understand it, is the presumption that people think the same way we do. They have the same mindset that we have. If we find something repugnant, we expect others to think it's repugnant. If we like somebody, we think everybody should like somebody. In a politics, oh man, we're not going to delve into that. But for some reason, we just can't understand why everybody doesn't see it our way. That's theory of mind. Same thing with other areas like religion, whatever. We don't talk about those things, by the way, on this channel, but just using those four illustrations. So it's a point of theory of mind to all the neurotypical people. Sorry, but we just don't think the way that you do when it comes to looking you in the eye. And so when you, and I'm reiterating what I already said on purpose for emphasis, but when you insist that people with Asperger's syndrome look you in the eye so that you can have their undivided attention, it has the opposite effect. Okay, let's close out with this. Here's a little bit of a challenge for you. What I want to encourage you to do is just try some of these things. Next time you're having a conversation with somebody, try not looking them in the eye. What I want you to do is look at their mouths even as they speak and see, does that help? Do you remember that scene in the movie Rain Man where Rain Man was, uh, Raymond was uh, mimicking a radio announcer. It's 97X. Bam. The future of rock and roll. You know what he was doing? That's something akin to looking people in the mouth. Because what we do a lot of times, and I find myself doing this, is repeating what people are saying. It's unconscious. I don't do it on purpose. But we just do that. I think that's something akin to what uh, the, the uh, Dustin Hoffman's character was doing in uh, Rain Man. So try it. Look people in the mouth next time you have a conversation. Or try doing this. Try turning your head toward them, your ear rather, toward them so you can hear, close your eyes, and focus on what they're saying. I know I've gotten myself in trouble, particularly in school, when the teacher was speaking and I would close my eyes so that I could listen more intently and they would think that I was sleeping. I've done that in church a few times where I would sit there and close my eyes and listen. And one thing I absolutely positively do not want to do 
is fall asleep in church. And there's a really good reason for that, and that's because um, I tend to snore. Do not fall asleep in school. If you snore, do not fall asleep in church. If you snore, let's do a quick recap, not reclap. All right, people with Asperger's syndrome find eye contact to be uncomfortable and impractical, and here's why. First, we are not proficient in body language. Secondly, we're not neurologically wired for social interaction. Number three, we're practical and eye contact is not practical. Number four, we're just normal. Everybody does it to some extent in some circumstances. And number five, we like to focus. So what are you to do now? Well, here are a couple ideas. Give this video a thumbs up for one. That tells YouTube that people are interacting with this video and that encourages their algorithm to give this video a little boost. So we encourage you to give us a thumbs up, share this video on social media, and uh, that question I ask, I'd, yeah, I'd like to hear your answer to that in the comment section. And the question was this, do you think people should insist that those of us with Asperger's syndrome should look them in the eye so they can have our undivided attention? What do you think? Let me know.